Hello everybody! I have a cool practicing session for you, at least I hope, because I still have to start. You never know how it will uh, unfold, so to say. There's a weird cable here and it has a reason. If I press this button, you see my keyboard from the top. So there is a new camera right now. Thank you, Patreons! If you want to support us here on the channel and have more sessions like this, there's no better way than to go to the Patreon page where you meet a lot of other people. We have monthly hangouts, so talk to each other instead of through a camera, really direct. It's actually through a, through a camera as well, but I mean, it's a direct conversation. You get my point. And so I'm building this here, this setup to share with you, you know, my practicing sessions we're going to make. Um, courses here on all kinds of cool things, things that I've asked you, what are your struggles with notation, with practicing, I'm going to focus on historical fingerings, not as a boring theoretical, uh, you know, um, thing from the past, but to learn you how that fingering, when you apply it, actually can boost your uh, practicing time actually reduce your practicing time you will practice much faster and you will have more instant result it's what it is so but that's all for the future will happening be happening here and I'm building this reason for this cable is because this is a webcam and apparently you need a kind you cannot have an extension rope for USB uh, connected devices you have to have an amplifier as well so I ordered that it's not here yet but I couldn't wait to show you this cool setup with this uh, Logitech Brio webcam um, still some things to do here uh, but that will evolve as we go today I'm going to practice for um, not Bach I'm going to practice swelling for a reason that on Sunday I have a concert with the magnificent Renaissance Ensemble, Curende. They will sing some uh, beautiful Renaissance stuff and I will have, I will be playing some intermezzi with swelling. Um, it's a little bit weird in the, on the Leuven conscious organ, it's a Baroque organ, but um, to match the style there is really beautiful in that church and the organ, you know, has all the keys necessary to play that music, as does here the clavichord. This is not a clavichord for swelling. Uh, it's very far from that. This is a modern clavichord developed at the end of the 18th century, so a clavichord is not a clavichord. But I could practice this at home at my organ, but the keys are so much wider, it's not very much, but it's, 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 you can feel it and I'm missing notes there because the Leuven organ is very similar to this keyboard, not to say exactly the same, both Saxon types of instruments, so practicing on the clavichord when you have the opportunity, it will help your organ touch and your organ technique develop as well. So, I'm going to play now the Ritzerkar which already I have recorded, I believe, on the clavichord. I actually forgot. Go check it out. Um, but those pieces you have, every time you play them, you have to practice them from scratch. Uh, it's a monumental work. And the, the, my main point for this practicing session, I have still a few days, is some technical stuff. There are some really difficult parallel sixth and kinds of runs, you know, famous for Swelling and for the English composers as well at the time, or a little bit later. So it was pretty virtuosic actually. So I'm going, I'm going to check those so that I will not miss too many notes on Sunday. It will be freezing cold in the church, it will be a challenge as well. And the tempo is something I'm really concerned, not concerned, but I will focus on. A tempo not in the sense of what's the correct historical tempo. That's actually very, very, very nice to make an episode um, on that because if our interpretation of Mersenne is not correct, you should double the tempo of these pieces because then you would have only one second for a complete bar, which would lead to insane speeds of 16, 16 notes a second. I mean, this is like ridiculous already now. You can say Merzen's tempo in whole beat, like our interpretation, is pretty on the fast side for that music. Probably was much slower, like uh, like 40-ish, 44-ish for the, uh, well, for the half note, so to say, in single beat. Anyways, that's not the topic of today. 
but to keep that tempo during a throughout a piece that's like 15 16 minutes long is pretty hard so um, I will do this while trying to feel the pulse it's hard to explain um, but certainly when the rhythm shifts from you start in, in whole note half notes then you have some eighth note developments and then suddenly there will be 16th notes or dotted eight notes 16th notes and so on and there is a huge chance there is a risk there that you know the player just speeds up anybody so but then the piece loses all its grandeur so to say um, this is a piece that you know if you have if you ever are in the Netherlands and you go to those churches like in Harlem, Alkmaar, those big, big, big churches from the time of, I mean, they're earlier than this piece, but you have those, those, those buildings built by Jacob van Kampen, the architect famously for his, uh, you know, the, 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 the Palais of the Dam still, um, or the famous organ case in Alkmaar, Laurens, uh, the big church, Laurens church. That's, this is like, if you hear this music there, it's like, I've, of course, I studied there, but that's like, there is there are few things more beautiful than that. It's in a way static. It's beautiful counterpoint, um, more or less directly leading to Bach. But if you hear it there in this these churches of that time with this music that takes for 15, even longer minutes, you will you will have a different, you are a different person when you leave the church. Okay, enough talk. Uh, six minutes, seven minutes, that's not too bad for me for an introduction. We're going to practice and next time this, this little rope will be disappeared and also this pillow, which is here, um, is a little bit weird, but I did that to enable you perhaps, I don't know, to uh, enable you to see the score and to read the score directly. If I flatten it completely, it's a little bit difficult for me to read. If I put it really upright or stand you know, in a normal position, uh, you will not be able to read it. So let me know in the comments uh, what you think of the setup. I will check the sound. I mean, everything is need, needs to develop. But for now, we're good to go. And so let's start the Ritzerkare. Difficult is to have this feeling of the up down, the tact is so to say, also in the long notes. Uh, when you have 16 notes, it's not so difficult. When you have long notes, you have this point where you have to play the other note, obviously. And uh, that's on the clavichord a little bit easier than on an organ when you have this full length of sound. So, but we'll try. We go there. So I first imagine the 16th notes, obviously, tac. Maybe we just start there to see what kind of tempo we want to have. That's the pillow, obviously. You see? Uh-oh. There goes my practicing session. Can we do that in another way? Like this, like 16. I will figure something out, guys, here. Mm -mm. The clever chord says no. Then there will be no option then to do it in the classical way. Let me check. Yeah, it will be not easy for you to read the score like this. Huh? But I need all the strings, unfortunately. So let's, uh, let's check. Huh? fingers feel like crap. I've been working on the computer the whole day. So something like that.
You know it's so, so difficult, I'm really fighting the clavichord now. I, I, you, you remember from the last practicing session, I told you I'm bringing the three instruments together, organ, pianoforte and clavichord, and I'm playing these days like quite a time on I spent quite a time on the cla on the on the on the piano but the touch is so different so different and so it's like on I I I'm feeling like on the you know on the edge on both sides when I would play on on the clavichord like on the piano it's it's hard to imagine how I could imitate that but like with a relaxed hand of course with the clavichord the hand is relaxed as well but in a different way you would have like a sound like I, let's let's forget I'm on the clavichord so I pretend now to be on the piano it's so hard eh? It's so hard because my ears adjust immediately, but this, 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 this shallow depth of uh, depth of key dip, you know, compared to the forte piano is also not so much, but it's much much deeper than this. Like I think it's four millimeter against seven. Then the organ and living is like ten millimeters. You 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 have a key weight here of about twelve grams on the forte piano. On the Fritz, I think it's like thirty seven. Um, in Leuven, I have no idea, but the organ, when you couple and the bass, it must be like 200, like, and all of that, it's mixed together. And I'm feeling now like, how am I going to, to break this piece? So I have to really adapt to the instruments and that instrument, and I, you will hear that. But much more key weight, actually, that's the... That's the reason why organ and clavichord are so close to each other. In spite of the fact that it's only 12 grams, you can use the same technique on an organ with 200 grams. That's nice. fighting the instrument now guys okay by the way when you will have my fingering there you can access that this score on patreon there is a certain tier level and you just go there and you can follow i've also indicated all the theme entrances this is like crazy this piece so i'm fighting the instrument but also the instrument needs to be it's so rigid now it needs to be played more clever chords go to sleep when you don't play often on them
difficult there at the end. I have no idea how this feels as a listener, but um, I could play this for hours and hours. This is, this is never fatiguing. And I was surprised this time that the end was reached so fast. Um, there were some places where I, I messed up a little bit, so I'm going over those. Um, and on clavichord it's a different piece, huh? it's so different because now you have the possibility to bring in, you know, inner voices that you do not have the possibility on an organ. But on an organ you have these long notes, I think obviously it's at the end an organ piece, I mean, yeah. For, for, for the reason of those long notes and then they, they like, they bring so much peace and calm so to say, inside. All these notes are just developing and all the tactics is always the same, hopefully. And then the piece develops in the structure, in eighth notes, in triplets, in even sometimes faster notes, even 32nd notes, that's ornamentation, 16th notes. We have always a tactus. And then Swirling puts on top of that oftentimes these long notes and on an organ it's like It's indescribable. It's indescribable uh, Let's see what at the end because this is a really 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 difficult run and I played with old fingering like three three two three two something goes wrong in this run then you have nothing to hide eh? behind is also there to just play a little bit not under tempo but your your feeling should be like you're a little bit excited when you play this on a concert like also a little bit scared everybody is eh? everybody all levels <laughs> this is like guys if you play the piano and imagine that here there is no sustaining pedal there's nothing 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 to hide and I'm not saying that the piano is easy eh? but you hear sometimes the reverse like this music is virtuosic in this in, in this sense as well. It's it's testing the player. But of course in a time where it was more about beauty instead of like seeing if you could, you know, play that particular line um, meticulously without wrong notes at a certain time, you know, that's that's what we do today. Can you can you act, can you can you be a CD player or a Spotify player, you know? That may be a little bit more of an update for updated version. But in that time, like this was just a test. Eh? Beautiful. 
also here tricky when he goes to the triplets. And before that, you have... No, here, this is difficult. This is difficult because they... So you have one left hand, and then you have to one, one, two, and then again two. There's no other solution. This articulation I cannot do on that Saxon organ there and even uh, there's like a big German organ like are you kidding me those short notes like be serious dude like these massive organ pipes like <laughs> they will laugh a little bit but but you can do a little you can imitate that you have to adapt of course that's the that's a difficult thing to adapt always to other instruments, but as an organist, you know, you're used to that. And that's also part of the fascination, of course. I could give like an analyze, analysis of this piece, which is not so difficult, but to show you where all the theme entrances are. You have no idea when you listen to that, like it sounds like you have a theme entrance and a, rep and a repeat in the left hand or in the middle voice, but it's all repeated notes, like, uh, repeated themes. Even when he accelerates within the motif, it's unbelievable, this, this highest level counterpoint you can imagine. I always think when I play this on the clavichord, like people saying, I don't feel the bow, I don't feel like lines. To buy you some musical ears, I would say. Like, what are you asking for? Like this constant tension, this constant motion, this constant, constant like, what? The, the calm and the, the, the peace you feel when you just have the gut, the balls, I would say. Well, I wanted to say it, just wait. Isn't that a line? <laughs> it's unbelievable actually. On the edge, just one. Huh?
check my tempo here just for my personal inventory so to say because I have the impression it was pretty slow but there was such a nice breath into the music and sometimes I mean compare the last version with the first one what the same person same time same instrument same me every same everything and what a difference what a difference at least from my feeling I don't know if you had the same impression let me know uh, there I am in full screen. Unbelievable. This doctor is so unbelievable. So yeah, this is around 35 for half note. So in Merzen notation this would be 35 for the whole note. Um, am I saying this right? Um, I'm too tired to think about that. Anyways, 35 half note single beat modern reading. So every tick 35 ish. It's pretty slow. It's absolute by far the slowest version I've ever played. The strange thing is in my head, it feels like the shortest. Strange. And when you play a piece like that, it has so many complex issues technically that you can fight or you can think how to solve it. And oftentimes just by going a little slower is, um, is a solution. The funny thing though is that, I, I don't know, I will see on the organ, by the way, I'm going to record this session probably. It will go only on Patreon. Um, it's a private con that's a private concert, but I cannot share that concert. Uh, uh, those sessions go on Patreon. Anyways, on organ, I'm, I'm very curious to see if, in spite of the fact that the organ has the longest note sustain of all the instruments, all keyboard instruments, I think that this slow of a tempo is only possible on a, on a string instrument like this. And so, just to, to close this session, it's you hear so often like, yeah, but these early period instruments with short tone, short, uh, short uh, quick decay of sound, they require, uh, you require it as a player to play faster because the sound decays much faster, so what do you want? The opposite is actually true. I'm not saying there is no correlation, and maybe the opposite is too strong, but the shortness of sound you have on the clavichord is very helpful for the transparency. And so it has nothing to do primarily with this, with the speed you play in. It's just to suggest length of note when it is not there, which you have to do anyways with every type of keyboard instrument, even on the Steinway, also there. And even in the, in the much faster tempi of today, the sound will be gone oftentimes before you can hit the next one. So you have always to make a suggestion of lines of uh, legato, if you wish. Anyways, I hope you liked this session as much as I did. And uh, guys, we're going to do this more in the future. You just have to see how this develops also on YouTube. Once the setup is done, it's just a fixed camera there. You just press a few buttons and I'm practicing here. And those sessions oftentimes are actually always very intense for me because I know you are listening. And so this changes a lot. I'm just kidding. Or actually, I'm not kidding. It does help. To focus but uh, in general I'm focused when I'm practice, practicing. We're going to do also, we're going to return to Bach of course, what temp the clavier, I want to prepare that fully as you fix also my desk so I can make the fingering for the last one and then also I had a question for Mozart but Mozart is coming. I, my plan is also to record the 18 sonatas. I think 15 or so are already on YouTube. I should put them in a playlist, maybe they are in a playlist, just check it out. Um, but those recordings go back really long time. 
and I want to finish also the last sonatas of Mozart but there will be a recording project for next year or in two years I don't know but I'm going to prepare those because they sound magnificent on the clavichord they do also on the fritz but when we are going to make a recording on the clavichord and the fritz then it's me blowing on the clavichord and Alberto on the fritz but don't tell anyone he's a little bit afraid of Mozart I don't know why because I think he would be a wonderful Mozart player guys thank you for being here Thanks for uh, being on Patreon as well, because these sessions are made possible by the patrons. So if you want to support this, if you want to see also this content more, go and have a look. I have to update the Patreon page desperately, so you will find a very outdated introduction there. A video from, I think I recorded that in 1752 or something like that. It's like 500 years old. So I have to update that, but we have a cool community there, a very strong support for everything we do. That was it for today. We're going to finish some work here and we see each other soon again. Bye.